Hi, my name is Dean. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to observe and correct the beam quality of the output of a continuum sure light YAG laser. Uh, for my purposes, I build mid infrared parametric converters. I would like to have a beam that's as uniform in intensity across the beam and a beam that's well collimated. For other OPOs, like the Surelight OPO that I have here, uh, the collimation of the beam is not as important to the output performance as the uh, actual energy output from the ag. The energy output from this device can only really be increased by increasing the voltage to the flash lamps. This leads to a higher output energy from the lamps and from the YAG laser, but it also increases the thermal loading on the YAG rod, creating the thermal lens that causes the output beam to become focused. So um, I have this system set up right now at, at the design parameters for the Surelight OPO. Let's just see what happens. 1.39 volts and I've got a white card in the beam and I'm not sure if you can see on this video but I can see the white card glowing uh, a bit white on the top and the lower portions of the beam indicating that the uh, beam is just a little bit more intense in these uh, in these positions. Okay, now let's see how much energy we have here from this. And when the power meter thermalizes, we'll, uh, we'll find that it's about 860 millijoules that we're getting out of the system. Now let's see what the beam looks like at a distance of 380 centimeters from the output. There, I think you're being able to see it right now. Um, what you'll find when I stop the beam from flashing like that is that it's, it's actually burning the paper. Okay. Now, Let's turn down, turn it down to 1.32 kilovolts on the output. I'll move the paper to a new spot. And first measure the output energy. Let me point out that on the card here, I don't see any white glow at all, meaning the intensity is well below the, uh, the limit that this card has. And I'm getting about 670 millijoules of energy from the system. Let's check what the far field profile looks like. And I'm not damaging the card and I don't see any white spots at all. I see a nice glow from the white paper. Okay, so to me the beam is a lot better for pumping the OPO. I've taken some burns here showing what the uh, output looks like uh, on Kodak paper. I've done this at a, a Q-switch delay of 303 microseconds, reducing the output energy to make the paper a little bit more sensitive to uh, and showing me uh, what the beam profile looks like. Uh, at 1.39 kb, uh, you can see that the beam looks 
uh, smaller and actually more intense uh, out at uh, 3.8 meters, just as we measured. Uh, at 1.32 kV, I see a, a beam that's uh, slightly larger just from becoming more diffuse, but the energy distribution looks about the same as it did when it was in close. Uh, and that's what I would hope to see. Now, the other thing that you can do to affect the output from the from these lasers is to uh, adjust the uh, uh, adjust the uh, resonant cavity. You have two mirrors: the output coupler and the rear mirror here. Both have adjustment screws on them, but the output adjustment screws on the uh, output coupler should never be touched. Only those on the uh, rear mirror can be touched. And this is done just to change the distribution of the output energy across the beam. Let's see what we got. I'm going to do this at a Q-switch delay of 290 microseconds. I found earlier that that gave me a better profile to look at for this. And I'll take back burns of the beam out here. Oops. And you can see I've, I've got a fairly nice energy distribution. It's uh, not as hot on the sides. It's hotter on the top and the bottom of the uh, beam. And that's because the flash lamps are on the top and bottom side of the, of the gag rod. So that looks fairly nice to me. Let's... Let me show you what happens if you actually do an adjustment to the rear mirror. Uh, if, say, the energy was uh, hotter on top of the beam, I would like to lower the beam down. And by turning this screw clockwise, I'll be pushing the mirror forward and should do exactly that. So I'll move it a fair distance like that. Go back and look at the output. And you can see now we got a beam that's much hotter on the bottom side. So I've misadjusted it. Uh, I can definitely get that back again. By moving the YAG into the correct position. Side-to-side uh, -side adjustments are done in the same way. Uh, using the lower adjustment knob. Now the paper I've been using for this uh, demonstration uh, is the Kodak Linograph paper, type 1895. That's the stuff I've been using to take the burns here. Uh, it hasn't been manufactured for 20 years, so if uh, old customers need some, just write me and I'll send you some more. The white paper that I prefer uh, using this comes from international paper called uh, Accent Opaque Digital. It's a hundred pound stock called Cover Smooth. And then there's one more uh, card that's very nice to use. Uh, it's uh, the fluorescent cards you can get from office supply stores or online. And they work really good for uh, locating and seeing the direction the a weak YAG beam is going in. So. Yeah, it's not showing up. There we go. So we've adjusted the uh, collimation of the Sherlite laser. We've adjusted its resonant cavity to give a good beam profile. Uh, I'd like to show you how I go about integrating it with one of the OPO OPA systems that I build. Uh, the system I'm using it with is a narrow band system that was pumped with a Sherlite EX that's injection seated. Um, to bring the new laser in, I'm just going to add two more optics here and use them to align the beam to the two apertures that I now use internally for alignment purposes. Uh, note that I no longer use a thin film polarizer as it is unneeded. 
Uh, to do the adjustment, you want to start at low energy. Uh, I typically delay the Q switch uh, out to 400 microseconds, which gives me about 180 millijoules. And it's the perfect amount of energy for tracing the one micron beam path with these fluorescent cards. Okay. Once you have the alignment to the two apertures uh, uh, fairly well adjusted, you can fine tune it by going to higher energy and slowly closing down the apertures until you start to clip the beam. And then you could do the final adjustments by centering the clipping on the aperture for each of the apertures. Okay, I've already done that, so I'm now ready. Uh, the next step is to look at what the beam looks like at the crystals. Uh, and so I'm going to start by using the slightly lower energy. I'll use a Q-switch delay of uh, 300 uh, microseconds, which gives me about 530 millijoules of one micron. Okay, I'd like to show you what the beam looks like. I'll move the one block here. If I move the card around in the beam, you should be able to see the white fluorescence uh, from the pump beam. And it looks very smooth. I don't see any uh, bright spots, so no hot spots on the beam right now. So I could let that beam in. Uh, but first I want to go back and see what the uh, OPO stage looks like in the green. One of the things that I've noticed with a zero setting here on, the, uh, on this stage is that the uh, green output still has a uh, profile that looks like uh, a clover leaf. And this is a, a, like a green beam with a, a black cross in the center of it. Um, this is due to this particular pump laser, uh, uh, which has a, a little bit of radially, radially induced birefringence. And so you end up with uh, uh, patterns that uh, look like that. The Continuum EX, uh, since it's injection seated, uses a couple of wave plates and shows actually a complete minimum uh, when you turn the wave plate here to zero. Okay, let's just see how much energy we're getting out of the oscillator with 530 millijoules of pump. I've got the beam going through the uh, OPA stage, which is blocked right now with the card. And on the power meter, I'm measuring just about uh, 1.7 millijoules uh, per pulse. Okay, let me unblock the beam here. Make sure the wave plate is at 45 degrees. And you'll see I have about 40 millijoules of total output. Okay. Now I'm going to put the card back in the beam. and go up to full energy. Let's turn this down and block it for right now. So a Q-switch delay setting of 250. Right now I've got the uh, lamp voltage as it was previously set uh, for a collimated output of 1.32 uh, kilovolts. And over here, I'm not seeing any bright white spots on the beam, which is really nice. This is about 675 millijoules total coming in from the pump laser. So I can adjust the beam higher, but let me first take a, some burns to see how the beam is centered in the crystal. I'll take it at the beam dump.
Okay. Let's just zoom in on that. Okay, that's the front burn. You can see the beam is nicely centered. It's a little overfilling the crystal, so you can see leakage around. The crystals are all in at normal incidence right now. Uh, since I'm operating in a wavelength of 745 nanometers. And the back burn shows, sorry, back burn shows uh, still a well-centered beam. Okay, since the beam is not burning the paper, I'm gonna turn up the energy a little bit more. This will make the beam slightly smaller. and more energy will be coming out. Okay, that would be a very safe beam to work with. I can leave the card, rest in the beam, and it's not damaging. So let me just turn this up another notch. The burnt spot you see on the right is from an earlier measurement I did. And that's the kind of damage you see on the card uh, when the beam gets too hot. A couple of brown spots where it starts to cook. And nothing at 1.34, so let's go to 1.35. Okay, and now I'm starting to see white spots in the beam that are standing out. They're glowing, in my view, and they're going to be causing the damage like you see over here on the, uh, to the right of those spots. Okay, this is actually still a safe level to work at, but it's putting you much closer to what would be the uh, damage threshold of the uh, OPA crystals. And since they're so expensive, you'd like to stay away, as far away from the damage threshold as possible. But if you needed the output energy, you could run like this. A bad level uh, for the OPA crystals would be a burn, uh, a, a card that burns on every single shot and raises the paper like like you see on the uh, right there. So this is a little hot for uh, my uh, purposes, so I'm going to turn it back to 1.34, which is about 710 millijoules on the output. And let's just see what we get out from the system. Okay, we're at 45 here. If you need to lower the uh, output energy caused by the uh, OPA stage, all you need to do is rotate uh, the uh, wave plate. And that's flipping the polarization, and so it won't be contributing to the conversion. Yeah, right now we have... Um, a little over 90 millijoules per pulse. And this is at 7.45 nanometer. Okay, that's all I have for you on beam alignment.